Hopefully it's not too loud here. Alright, there we go. I should have popped out the... Oh, I can still read the chat. <laughs> Okay, so you're probably wondering, Brett, didn't you already stream Earthworm Jim before? And yeah, you're right. So why am I doing it again? Um, well, firstly, this is the Genesis version. Second, I thought I would do a better performance on that. There's actually a handful of games that I feel like I wanted to replay and kind of do a better job with. I'm not going to do every single game, but, you know, just for fun. Uh, there's also some other ideas behind replaying some of these games. But third and finally, um, because I feel like it. <laughs> yeah. So, that being said, uh, let's just get back to the, yeah, I don't need all this. Let's go to the options and see if we got, yeah, because when it comes to, honestly, the Genesis version is a better version by comparison because one, there's an additional level that was taken out of the SNES version, and two, you can actually see things better. Well, you mm. can, because you have, yeah, there's no screen crunch. Um, I can do normal. Let's see, mm. fire, whip, and jump. Hmm. Let's change that just a bit. It, it kind of reminds yeah. me a bit of like when AVGN reviewed the Ghostbusters video game and he said that while the Nintendo one was completely terrible, the Genesis version seemed to be the definitive good version. If you want to play a good Ghostbusters game, I think there's um, a Ghostbusters uh, 3D game that came out almost a decade ago. Oh yeah, I remember that one. I think a lot of people even went as far as to say that whenever the news of Ghostbusters 3 was cancelled for the 2016 Ghostbusters. Uh-huh. They said that, that the, uh, the 3D Son game was... <laughs> Son of a bitch! I'm, it, I'm sorry, they, I'm trying to get through this crevice here. Damn it! Don't worry, you're fine. There we go. But they said that the, um, that game that was for, I think, Xbox 360 was pretty much their Ghostbusters 3. Hmm. Alright, I'm gonna have to pop the chat out because... What is it? No, switch the non-mod settings. Pop out chat. Thank you. Now I can actually read it. Let's move you over here. All right. I still have to see um, Afterlife. Afterlife? Yeah, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Oh, it, it is good. Like, I've seen snippets of it. It looks promising. Like... I feel like that's what the 2016 version of Ghostbusters should have been. And, like, I don't want to be the spirit of oh, well, they were critical on Jazz. I think they genuinely wanted to do a good movie, but they were still focused on trying to. Def, you are cutting out. Gosh, uh, hold on. Let me, um, let me snuff the microphone. Ah, damn it. There's always two of them. No, that's don't better? climb up. Jesus. Want to get yourself rabies? Is that better now? Much better. Okay, I didn't have a microphone in, that's why. It's like so, the Amanda um, show with the rental guys. Much better! <laughs> Much better! It made my eyes bleed! <laughs> God, I love those skits. But anyway, like, I don't want a bad... Like, I do feel like the 2016 Ghostbusters tried... But they focus more on just the image than actually giving us a decent adaptation, which is why I got the boot. I'm that just, and you know, I'm just, that gonna, and you, I'm just gonna say right now, Paul Feig is an overgrown child. Yeah, he is. That's what also ruined the movie, I think, for a lot of people. Because had they just simply left it at that, most people could have just simply been like, "It's a dumb movie, but it's harmless. Nothing really too spectacular, but nothing too original." But when Paul Feig opened his mouth and was like, you people don't like this because it's women. No, That's it's because That's not the it's reason. A... It's because it looks, it's, something was off about it. Yeah, some people said, I think the idea was that it just didn't look like they put effort. And that it just seemed to focus more on the fact that, oh, well, it's a female Ghostbuster cast and that's it. Which again, that wasn't the problem because there were already female Ghostbusters in the C Ghostbusters cartoon. The real Ghostbusters or Extreme Ghostbusters? Um, I think it was real Ghostbusters. Okay. I mean, and, and as we saw, 
freaking afterlife proved that no, it wasn't the it wasn't because girls. It's just because people wanted a good story. Yeah, I mean, you have a girl like who's um, who's a granddaughter of Egon. Yeah, that's what I feel they should have done too. They should have tried to give a little bit more respect to um, Harold Ramis. Which, yeah, there was sort of a reference to Harold Ramis in the in the 2016 movie, but it was like so completely out, like like out of the way that it just felt very like like an afterthought, I suppose. Like, okay, so even before the release, like, I did hear that when the 2016 came out, at that time, uh, people just thought, eh, whatever. Like, it was just a movie that happened. Um, yeah. I just don't like the director's attitude. He's... Yeah, no. no it's the same bullcrap that happened with uh, M. Night Shyamalan on The Last Airbender, which, the movie is utter trash, but he says, like, oh, people don't understand the way I make movies. No! You just do a terrible job with what you're doing, dude. Yeah. And the thing that's frustrating about M. Night Shyamalan is the fact that we've seen him deliver beforehand. He made The Sixth Sense, he made Signs, which I know many people make fun of Signs, but I still thought it was a pretty good, decent movie. Wow. He made The Village, which I thought was pretty damn good. And what was the other one? Unbreakable. Unbreakable. <laughs> we were both thinking that. <laughs> Everybody loved Unbreakable. So it's not like M. Night Shyamalan can't deliver. It's just that his ego got the best of him. Basically, yeah. And if you and if and if people and if people thought that The Last Airbender was insulting, which it is, Lady in the Water was the movie that really really showcased his egotism considering that at one point the person that quote unquote has to deliver the message and has and, and eventually has to die to deliver that message is played by M. Night Shyamalan himself. Yikes. Like, wow, Shyamalan, you really must think that you're like the next big thing. You were supposed to zip line? Yeah, um, yeah, you, uh, you shoot across to get across the zip line. Oh, this guy's a bitch. Oh, come on. I shot that tuba. This looks like the robot from Short Circuit. He's annoying. <laughs> mm, nope. Super crook. Get out of here. Also, this may be this may sound like a hot take. I don't like the plasma shots, especially huh. when you can't change back. Cause that's 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 one of the annoying things about um, a few things that I have complaints about this game. Um, cause you only cause when you get the plasma shots, you only have them until you use them up. Like they could be useful for a few things, but you can't change them, which is kind of silly. <laughs> I can now imagine that, yes, this is a 90s game. Yes, it's beyond 90s. Garbage day! Yeah, definitely garbage, garbage day. Garbage day! God, that was a meme. <laughs> I love the hell out of it, though. <laughs> I mean, everyone's loved bad movies, so... Nope! It's like that one time a friend of mine, like... He and I had a little habit of watching terrible movies together, so I tried to show him The Devil Inside because it's a terrible found footage movie. But he found it more boring than bad, so to make up for it, we watched The Ow! Happening. Jesus. Oh, he's gonna get... Oh, that's right. He's on his last hit, so... Oh. Get out of here, Tuba. There we go. Oh, wait, no, it wasn't The Happening. It was a movie called Rubber. Hmm. Which, that movie is... Jesus Christ, I thought, and I thought that David Lynch was a creepy director. No, I think, I think David Lynch had a few regrets uh, from his past movies. Like, he definitely regretted, um, I think Dude. his, yeah, he, he regretted that one. Um, but on the, like, there's also the opposite of directors who will fully admit fault of what they had made, and I will respect them for that. Um, Joel Schumacher, who directed, um... Batman, um, Batman and Robin, which yeah, it's an absolute hunk of trash. Like it's a fun hunk of trash. Like it's goofy as hell, but um, it doesn't line up with the tone of the Tim Burton movies. Things started to get a little more neon with Batman Forever because people complained about uh, Batman Returns as you know this too dark. 
like, I'm just like, uh, I think it's more depressing that it's kind of depressing with how, you know, Catwoman beca became Catwoman. Um, but, yeah. but there, there were mob death scenes in the first movie. I'm just like, I how did, they, how did they not expect that to be a thing? Yeah, really? So with that in mind, I'm just sitting there like, okay. Yeah, so with that in mind, um, ah, oh, damn it. I was off by one bubble. I could have gotten to continue the, um, <laughs> The Schumacher film of uh, Batman and Robin. Yeah, because like, it's not it's, it's like not only does he like take responsibility of like, yeah, I'm sorry, this movie upset a lot of you guys. It's not entirely his fault. The studio pushed him because after the success of Batman Forever, they were just like, oh, this movie uh, did a lot of money. Quick, do another one. Do another one. Do it fast. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, it was pointed out that like they literally told him film it like a like a uh, like a toy commercial, oh. which really pissed off, which really pissed off uh, Joel Schumacher. It's not to mention, and again, the thing that makes the movie even more bizarre is the fact that they got Arnold to play motherfucking um ice man i will okay mr freeze sorry mr yeah, freeze no, you can tell arnold was having way too much fun playing as mr freeze yeah but and the thing is is that it, he would have fit a lot more better if he was bane because he has the body he has the the voice oh that was and mentioned yet... by uh the guy who did uh what happened and he mentioned that um matt um he used to be part of the two best friends play. Okay, I'm not going to go that way. Oh, yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's like, you know, you could have just gotten, like, actual Bane. Like, yeah, I, I, mean, I will and break you, Batman. Yeah, that would have been very good. And the funny thing is that that's technically what they did with the Dark Knight trilogy, with the final Dark Knight movie. Yeah. The, the only that, difference that, was, that they got. The yeah, only difference instead, they, got they just... Hardy. Yeah, instead in Batman and Robin they got Bane as like the big dumb, the big muscle dumb person or uh, yeah. architect, which it's it's already uh, like an unappealing idea that oh you just undermine the intel like it's like oh it's more muscle over brains or something like that like even isn't though a brain is a muscle isn't it yeah even and not to mention even though Bane was still a goddamn threat to Batman this is the guy who in the um nightfall storyline he literally broke batman by not only him not only making him completely exhausted from all the all the entire night of him trying to stop criminals but literally broke his spine and yet this and yet this movie went nah bane is just a dumbass that makes no sense what the fuck is wrong with you it's like that weird moment from Jurassic Park 3 where they kill off the T-Rex. No, I don't want your bills. Fuck off. <laughs> I think that's a lawyer. Oh, I it. want a lawyer! Oh. This guy's obnoxious! In the SNES version, he's a lot worse. Oh dear. Yeah, so, as you can see, like, he he randomly appears, but more often than not, he likes to appear where you're standing. Which is a huge disadvantage on your end, like... Yeah, in the SNES version, he just pops up very quickly. This one, he has a bit of a... Um, it takes a little bit. Uh... Yeah. yeah. Fuck off. You're so obnoxious. Get cucked. Get cucked, snowman. Oh, yeah. Am I being tagged? No, it's um just oh. a reminder. Yeah, there was a server that like tags everybody like, hey, Brett just went live. Drive spikes coming down. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Run, run, run! Now I was just quoting uh, Aaron when he did his uh, Mega Man X video. Jerry Willis Spikes! Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh man! <laughs> I'm on Super Nintendo, same with the sequel. That's fine. I did play the Super, like I streamed the Super NES version. 
Ah, oh, damn it! Mm. No, like, that's just another reason why I don't like the plasma shot. Mm. Yep. Yippee! I love it when he says that. E. Oh, wait. No, 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 no! Oh, fucking hell. Oh, fuck. That was... Uh... God damn it. Plasma. Drop. Just the way he, just the way he talks. All I can think is, now I want to go see the movie. We'll see. Um, what was the name of it? Uh, Beverly Hills Ninja again. Beverly Hills what? Beverly Hills Ninja. That was a movie that featured uh Chris Farley, where he, where essentially he's raised by a group of ninjas and he's tasked to protect this woman. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No. How is Frosty not melting in the realm of fuck? You're you're questioning a game that has Tim Burton like art style in a universe where everything is goofy and lacks any logic. Oh shit! Damn it! Come on! This part is such a bitch. Fuck! Oh, 